Alright, so I want to talk about Sega Superstar Tennis, because Wimbledon's going on and that's pretty much the best excuse I'll ever have to dig up this old game. The sport of tennis has always translated pretty well into video games. Heck, even the very first video game ever created was a tennis game, being Tennis for Two. So I guess it was only a matter of time until Sega decided, hey, you know what? Let's take our developer that's already making a bunch of tennis games for us, pair it with a bunch of Sega icons, take a beloved mascot, shoo him aside and put Sonic in instead, boom, Sega Superstar Tennis. Sega Superstars Tennis was released in March of 2008 and, weirdly enough, is a sequel to an old PlayStation 2 game simply titled Sega Superstars. That game was a party game using the PlayStation 2's iToy accessory and was only released for that console, so it really wasn't until Sega Superstars Tennis that the Sega Superstar title really took off. Sega Superstars Tennis would spin off into Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, which then would have a sequel, Sonic and All-Stars Transformed Racing, and then eventually into Team Sonic Racing. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that the tennis games got phased out in favor of the racing games, and it's not even because the tennis game was that bad. Honestly, you could have had both coexisting beside each other, and I think it would have been a great way to strengthen the Sega All-Star brand as a whole. It could have also acted as the perfect way to introduce a younger audience into some of these older Sega icons. I mean, I can personally say I didn't know what the heck a Knights was until I played this game, so I um, mean, there's that for you. But before you know what a Knights is, you have to know what a Tennis is. And I can surely say that Sega Superstar Tennis is really good. The gameplay is simple and not overcomplicated, and it's not bogged down by some gimmick in the game. Sure, each character has a power-up that they can use, but that's to come expected by now in a mascot arcade tennis game. Also, the Sega theming in this game is just on point. It is perfect and the amount of fan service here is just amazing. Now, I grew up more on Nintendo rather than Sega, but I can appreciate the amount of love and attention that was put into these courts for the series that they're based on. I've never played Knights, but the tennis course that the series is based on is easily my favorite in the game. I mean, you're literally playing tennis in the pool of a fountain. That, that's just amazing. Plus, the music here, it, it's so good. So, we've got a few different modes to go through. Firstly being just your basic tennis mode, set up single matches, double matches, you could set up a tournament, but of course, this is an arcade tennis game. So, we're gonna have some mission modes and we're gonna have some mini games to play. Overall, like I said, the gameplay is very simple, it's straight to the point and it's fun, meaning that all these modes are enjoyable to play. Depending on what version of the game you have is dependent on how much content you're going to have in the game. The HD versions for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 are going to have a lot more missions than the Wii and DS. Which is honestly fine because I have the Wii version and I don't want to play any more of these missions than I have to. Honestly, the less the better. I, I hated these things. They're horrible. I know I said that the game is really fun and I do stand by that. That is my final opinion on this. but. That was a roller coaster of a ride getting to that opinion. At first, I hated this game. This game was terrible when I first started playing it. One of the unique features of the Wii version of this game is that there is multiple different control schemes. On the back of the box, it says that you can use the Wii Classic controller, which is what I tried to use because honestly, a tennis game without motion controls just that, that sounds amazing on the Wii. So I was going to try and go for that, but you go to the controller scheme selection and it's nowhere to be found. So then I decided, you know what? Let's just play with a Wiimote and a nunchuck plugged in, because that's probably the best way to play this. But guess what? There's motion controls doing that! I wanted to pound my head into a brick wall using these controls. They're slow, unresponsive, and just feel horrible. I could barely win against an easy computer using these control layouts. It was just horrible. I hated the experience, and I honestly almost just completely ditched the game as a whole. But instead, I decided to persevere, stick it out, and once again changed my control scheme. Honestly, playing in the classic control scheme is so much better. You eliminate any need for motion controls, and you can just simply use the D-pad to run around, which isn't the greatest, but it definitely beats having to use motion controls. Then to hit the ball, you simply just use one or two, and then deciding on what combo you want to use, you can either lob it or drop shot the ball. It's very simple. It's so much more fun to play the game like this. Don't attempt to use motion controls. If you have this game, please just, if you use motion controls, I'm, I'm sorry for you. Whew. That was a... that was a long tangent. Back to missions. There's a wide range of different missions you can play in this game. Some are simple, like singles and doubles matches, and some are just straight up tournaments. But others are what I could only consider to be my personal hell, aka the Super Monkey Ball missions. These missions broke me. I mean, like, actually broke me. I have not felt this defeated from a video game in probably forever. That, that's just how bad these are. 
If you actually like the Super Monkey Ball missions, then honestly just more power to you, man. Just keep going. There are these goals that are set up on the other side of the court, and you only have a certain amount of balls that you have to hit over to knock the Monkey Balls into the goals. Sounds simple, honestly doesn't even sound that hard, but it is very difficult for some reason. I, this could just be a me thing, but these are very hard. I don't know why it was, but I was just absolutely determined and dedicated to finish all of the Monkey Ball missions, and when I got to what I thought was the last final mission, all it did was just unlock another mission for me to do. I, I honestly didn't know how to feel about this, my only reaction was to just... Yeah, that. This is where my turning point on an opinion of the game changed. I ended up just setting the game down for a few hours, and I decided to come back with a fresh, open mind and give it another try. And I'm glad that I did. I ended up coming back and just trying a few doubles matches to get warmed up and really try and understand the controls, and that's when it finally clicked with me and just how good this game actually is. Going over to the mini game section, we're met with a few different mini game options that correlate to the theming and characters in the game. Honestly, they're all pretty simple here, nothing too outstanding, but they are all fun and unique. The Monkey Ball minigame is exactly like the missions for Monkey Ball, so you know I wasn't touching that thing at all. But if there is a standout minigame among them all, it's the House of the Dead game. Basically take the Zombies gameplay mode from Call of Duty, but put it into a tennis game. Sounds crazy? That's cause it is. It's a zombie horde survival game mode in a tennis game. That's just absolutely insane. I'm playing as a monkey trying to survive hordes of zombies. It literally doesn't get better than this. This is peak video game. I'm not even joking. Another one of the mini games that really stood out to me was the Jet Set Radio mini game because you have to be a lot more precise with your balls than some of the other game modes in this. And that's just a great way to get better at the game, honestly. But besides mission mode and minigame mode, it's simply just playing tennis with Sega characters, and I don't really say that in a bad way. There are plenty of playable characters that you can choose from, each with their own playstyle, and half of the roster is unlockable characters, which is really good incentive to actually play the mission mode. Each player also has a different power ability. I really don't know how this mechanic works, but slowly over time after hitting the ball back and forth, you are awarded with a power-up that you can use. It's not completely broken, but it does give you an edge in the gameplay. It's also really fun when there is a match going and there's like two or three people using their power-up abilities at the same time. It gets chaotic, but it's really fun, and it still never takes away from the core gameplay. All of the characters have unique dialogue and animations for if they're winning, losing, hit a good shot, lost a point. I mean, there's so many different things that each character can say and do, and it's full of a lot of charm. Although I do have to bring into question what Sonic's victory pose looks like. What is that? What is that face? What are you doing? But yeah, that's Sega Superstars Tennis for you. There's really not much to it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a solid tennis game with lots of good ideas and fun to play. They had also set up the future with Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing, which is a great series that I know a lot of people love. But if I have anything left to say about this game, it's just that I am beyond furious that Echo the Dolphin is not a playable character. Like, come on! You came this far, Sega, and you dropped the ball on that?